Good night. Good evening. Okay, we are going to start. We have, now it is eight o'clock, right? So <clears throat> I have this. Meanwhile, all your classmates are incorporated to the class. We have this word. It is a long word that we need to see here. Right, so we have here the snowman. And I would like you to help me to get what is the hidden word in here, right? So you can help me by saying letter by letter from the alphabet and let's see if we can find out this word, right? Some volunteers can tell me a uh, letter by letter. S. Okay, letter S. Okay. N. Can you repeat? N. 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 N as in non or M as in mother? N as in non. Non, okay, N. I. I? Yes. <laughs> O. W. Any other? Little C. No, se va a morir. A. Ahí, ahí está, A. <laughs> mm -hmm. G 
Sí. ¡Ah! Sí, ya la dijeron, ¿ok? Think, think, please. What? <laughs> no. R. Ya lo mencionaron. R. Ahí aparecen todas las que ya mencionaron, aquí arriba. ¿Eh? ¿Ti? ¿Ti? Yes. That's all. Um. No, no, <laughs> you. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so we have here the word inappropriate. Okay, inappropriate. In okay, sometimes we think because it is uh, very similar to Spanish, but whenever we want to spell this word, we say we say inappropriate. We say piate, but in English we need to say appropriate, appropriate, inappropriate. It is not inappropriate, as many people say sometimes, right? Now we have the second word. Let's see, this was the first one and it was the longest. But we have now the second one, only two words. E. E. Yes. Okay. T. T. Yeah. <laughs> A. Oh. The consonant. Excuse me. R. W. Oh. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> N M No P Letter P T as in tomato P. or P, P. as okay P. as in P. Peter P. Peter Okay Ah. <laughs> L L 
G. Behavior. Behavior. Okay, so we have behavior. behavior. And the previous word, uh, word is inappropriate. Both behavior. words, both words are related to the topic that we are going to study today, behavior. right? So we are going to talk about inappropriate behavior, right? Behavior. Good, thank you very much. I'm so sorry, Rene. Hasta ahorita estoy leyendo el chat. He said A and L. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So for today's class, we have this is a lesson number 12 and we have of course one objective to achieve the one for this class it is that you will be able to use should and should not to make a list of appropriate and inappropriate behavior at work, right? So we are going to see both appropriate and inappropriate behavior at work, right? So it means that we are going to include for today's class another modal auxiliary. Yesterday, we were studying with two different modal auxiliaries. Do you remember those modal auxiliaries from yesterday? Should and good. Good, 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 good man, good. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> okay. Would you mind? And could. Could. Okay, both, both of them. And now we are going to add one more. We are going to use should and should not, right? So we are going to start. My husband wants to have long hair. And uh, this is what we have from our books. In our book, we have this Look first here. question. My husband wants to have long hair. Does your company have regulations <clears throat> about employees' My behavior? Name three examples of unacceptable behavior in your company. So first, we need to understand what is behavior? What is regulations? And unacceptable. So, regulations, it is what we understand as norms. Yes? Uh, uh, there are different, like, policies that we need to respect in order to work in a healthy environment in our jobs, of course, right? And also it is part of uh, not only about my behavior, but about the team that I am working with. Imagine if I am a leader, if I am a supervisor, it means that I need to lead my team to respect the regulations that we have in our job, right? We can say here, name three examples of unacceptable behavior in our company. 
this is something that uh, we cannot um, or we shouldn't um, behave in that way in our job. It, that's why it says <clears throat> unacceptable. But sometimes it can be something um, subjective. I mean, that is something that you don't like, but maybe you need to respect something that you don't like, but it is part of the regulation, right? So we are going to discuss a little bit about these words. And I would like you to tell me through chat, I want you to tell me, can you share there an unacceptable behavior in your job? If you don't know how to say it in English, say it in Spanish. What we want to have in this moment, it is just the information, right? Something good that evening. You, good evening. Something that you might get in your mind that your co-worker did maybe in the past that you didn't like. Okay, Osvaldo. Osvaldo says, arriving late to work. For Osvaldo, he says that that is something unacceptable. Right? If you are working, it means that you have a schedule and you need to respect because that is part of the regulation. It means that you are going to be in your job at 8 in the morning or maybe at night, maybe at 7, maybe at 6. It depends on the regulations that you have, right? But only Osvaldo has written. Any other one? Okay, that is what uh, Osvaldo was saying, right? Uh, maybe when the, at the time of, when, when you begin your job and when you finish, of course, we need to respect both. Not only the uh, at the beginning, but also at the end of the shift. Matthew, he said, get drunk. Oh, yes. Okay, we need to respect that. And Elsa says, no usar el uniforme. Okay, if you have your uniform, it is part of the regulations that you need to wear it. It doesn't matter if it rains or not. You need to have your uniform. Jennifer mentions another one. It says, uh, you don't but talk to the other co-workers, okay? We can say to gossip. Gossips are the ones that uh, we listened, but maybe they are not true. They can be false. So we can have false information. Yes. Yes. Then Osvaldo has added another one that it says missing work on several occasions. Yes, okay. For example, that you miss two, three days in the month, maybe in a month, and then next month again, the same situation, and then maybe that is not part of the regulations that you have. Mouse says, use of sin language. Okay. Yes, we need to respect the others, right? We we need to know the vocabulary that we are going to use. Oh, yes. Rose, yes. Okay. It means that you better keep because you need to have um, the confidence, right? But you need to respect the job, right? About on. And not only about information, but also the resources. Good. Okay, guys. So we have an idea. 
And with that information, it is that we are going to start with the topic for today. Since uh, we are going to take as based of this, this uh, general statement that we have, right? For example, if you have regulations in your companies, let's see. In our book, we have the first conversation. And this is a basic conversation, but of course, we understand, we have to understand what it says. I'm going to read it for you. And you will see that we have used here, like uh, sentences, information that is in past, right? And then the, I'm going to read. This is between Claudia and Raul. I can't believe it. Robert is addicted to his phone. Did you see him? You're right. He should not shut in a meeting. Absolutely. That's not polite. He should answer his messages after the meetings. And we should not talk about him. That's not polite either. Agree, we should help him, help him instead. Here we have the context of the topic. Because what they are saying, they are trying in a way, even though it is just in the very end of this, they say that they should not talk about him. And this happens in our jobs, right? Um, whenever we have a conversation with our classmates, and then we have, uh, we listen different comments about maybe about you, maybe about a coworker, maybe a friend of yours. So we need to be very careful with this. But the important aspect in this conversation are the bold words. I have here, he should not chat in a meeting. He should answer his messages after the meetings. And finally we have, he should not talk about him. It is not he. We should not talk about him. And finally, this is the this was the last one, not the previous. We should help him. As I am pronouncing this, I am saying should. We have a silent letter here. Which is that silent letter? Which is that silent letter? L. That is L, okay? Thank you. Letter L is the one that I do not pronounce, right? So I'm going to cross it out and then this is what I need to pronounce. I can say, I should not chat. He should answer. We should not work or we should help him should 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 yesterday we were using could and now it is should but we were using yesterday could as a request and now this this um modal auxiliary has another purpose what is the purpose that you can infer from uh, the conversation? What is that purpose? Polite. Mm, polite? Polite. Okay polite but there is something more 
advice. Okay. That is like an advice. They are given they are given some suggestion in this case to a co-worker. Because they think that they can help him or they can help her by giving certain clues about the job, right? But these are just suggestions. You are giving advice. Should or should not. They they are talking. Yes. Yes. They are talking about inappropriate uh, behavior of Robert. Yes. That's what they are commenting in this conversation, right? The uh, Robert's behavior in this case. Okay. The way that he works if it is good or not. That is what they are discussing in here, right? Okay. Later, we are going to practice the pronunciation because I want to go to the very next slide. We have here vocabulary, for example, with behavior. What is behavior? Behavior, it says, that is the way that someone acts in different situations. And also, I have here three examples. Number one, it says, the company expects polite behavior from all the employees. Number two, Interrupting other people when they speak is not a good behavior. And this is the third one. Gossiping about co-worker is rude behavior. This is the word that I was telling you. Gossiping. Gossip. It is when you start making comments, maybe... They are true, maybe they are not true, but there is something that you have heard, right? So we have here, what are some polite behaviors you expect from your coworkers? And also what are some rude behaviors your coworkers are not expected to do? We are going to work <clears throat> on this think about those polite behaviors that you expect from them and also think in the opposite. Think about the rude behavior of your coworkers, the one that you don't expect or the ones that you didn't like. So we are going to think in the two different sides, good or bad behavior. I would like you to think you're going to go to to talk uh, these uh, two aspects with your classmates but I want you to take notes about your team if there are five members in your team the five members participate sharing information good or bad do you understand Much or menos? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, guys. Déjenme ver. I'm going to do it by myself because I always have listeners. I'm going to do it manually. Let's see.
Oops, we have a lot of listeners. Okay, Osvaldo Elsa, Moses, Matthew, one, two, three, four. And Jose Adilson, you are team number one. And team number two, we are going to have only two teams, Jennifer, Jessica, Jose Roberto, and Maximiliano. Okay. Oh, Wilfredo and Valeria, are you, are you, are you going to work? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to include Valeria. Teacher? Yes. Eh, solo para quedar super clara. Yes. Vamos a hacer lo de los cuadritos, ¿va? Lo de los cuadritos. That is what okay. you're going to do, right? Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to include a rose too. Okay, guys. So we are going to work just for five minutes. I'm going to be checking. So take notes about your classmates' comments too, please.
Y malas, ¿cuáles podrían ser? Bullying or intimidation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They have a bad uh, attitude, mal actitud. Uh -huh. They have a bad attitude. Uh, mentirosos, liars. Liars. Si so, usted manda al, al, al chat para si le tomamos cap. Okay. Yo lo traduje. Healthy coexistence. Mm, y será que así, o sea, así se dice, o sea, si sí, aplica el término para. Lo busqué, ajá, lo busqué en Google y así me aparece, pero no sé. Sana convivencia me aparece así, pero no sé. Uh -huh. Ok. ¿Cuál era el, el, el otro que estábamos diciendo? Este, yo puse uno que había dicho yo de ser educado, to be polite, ser educado. Uh -huh. Ajá.
Okay. Can you type, please, in the chat box? In an individual way, I want you to type in this moment, one, one of the polite behaviors from your coworkers. Positive, right? Polite behavior. Only one in the chat box, please. No, but I, I mean, <laughs> I mean positive, right? Ah, no, pero es que creo que esto lo estaban comentando, comentando en sus equipos, right? The ones that are from Rose and Matthew and Osvaldo. Okay, Rose then says, be respectful. They work as a team. To have a good attitude, good. And I have only three. How about Rose, it says again, healthy coexistence. Well, I've got one more, healthy coexistence. Be friendly, be friendly. Be on time. <laughs> Okay. But now let us go to the other side. This is something positive. Let us jump to the other side. Now let us check the ones that are some bad behavior, rude behaviors about your coworkers. Type. They are liars. They have a bad attitude. I don't like that they are um, hypocrites. I think that the spelling is different. Hypocrites, right? That we, we have to change it. The spelling, of course. Okay, bullying. Okay, that is related to bullying or, or intimidation. Do not yell at your co-workers. Oh, yes. They are unpunctual. Okay. Okay, good. Now that you have shared these uh, good and bad attitudes, good or bad behaviors that you are saying that maybe your co-workers are not getting on time to the jobs, they are getting late right? Or some other examples that you have in your mind. But now we have here, now we are going to start working with the structure. Okay, they have poor personal hygiene. Okay, Elsa, yes, yeah, we, that, that is something that we cannot deny, right? This is a list of some aspects related to the bad manners, bad manners that we should avoid. Maybe what you have written there, it is related to this one. For example, we say,
We have, for example, the first one. The boys went loud. It is not the loud boys when speaking. We have, we usually have like the two streams. We have people, we have co-workers that they shout when they're speaking, right? And you can listen all the information when they are sharing something in the office. It also happens when you, uh, if you use the public transportation, as I do, sometimes we can listen the complete conversation, right? From the last ones, because they are shouting their voice. It is really loud when they are speaking. And that is something that they consider in here in this information as a bad manners. Right, because um, better to have a, a more uh, private conversation with the one that we want to talk, right? So that's why this is something that we should avoid, shouting or speaking too loud. In addition, we have another one that it says controversial topics, controversial topics. What is this? It means that we should avoid talk, talking about these topics. We have one as, as an example. We have money. It means that we better change the topic. It means that talking about money, it is not healthy it is not good for you and not, and not for everyone. We can include another topic too, that it is to talk about politics. Politics, because later you are going to have like a disagreement with your classmates because in politics we have like different branches and there might be one that you don't like and you are not in agreement with your uh, co-workers so that's what it says that they are controversial topics money politics and religion too we can include religion in these controversial topics Another aspect that we should avoid, it is, for example, to ask personal questions to your coworkers. One thing it is when you want to share your information because you feel the confidence of sharing it, but it is very difficult when you don't feel like sharing something personal when the other person is asking you the first questions are you married are you single do you have kids because it usually happens for example if it is um if it is a woman and the first question that you ask her imagine that you are a new uh, person in that company. And it usually happens. Let us imagine that this person is, um, let me see, is Jose Adilson. He is new here. I'm sure. <laughs> that maybe if you have 10 co-workers that are lady, maybe, maybe the first question at the moment that they know you, it is not going to be, are you married? Right? And it doesn't, um, 
It doesn't matter if you are a man or if you are a woman. Boys shouldn't ask to ladies the question, are you married? In the very first day that you are meeting the person, if it is your co-worker. Right? So this personal information, we questions, we better take them apart and we better talk or start a conversation about our job directly. Later, if that person wants to share something personal, well, that it depends from the person. But it is not you that is like getting an interview from that person. You are not a journalist, right? So you're not going to ask this personal information. It is better to avoid it. Also, it says that we should avoid talking about ourselves all the time. That person maybe is new or not, but you have a coworker, and then you are going to start talking about you and not about your job. And you are going to say, well, I remember this experience and then I have lived this, I have overcome this, I, I have done, I have. And you're talking only about you. So we better listen to the other person. Another one. Interrupt people. They are sharing something maybe important related to the, the, the activities, to her job or his job, and then you go and interrupt because you want to change the topic because you are not paying attention about what she or he is telling you at that moment. And you just change the topic. All of a sudden, you change. You better follow the conversation. You understand it? And you are asking or the information has to be something uh, related to what you are talking in the moment, right? It is not like you want to interrupt at any moment. And another one that it is like obvious, but it is here. Mouthful. What do you understand by my mouthful? What is that? Comer con la boca llena. ¿Cómo es? Hablar con la boca llena. Ajá, that's it. Okay. Okay. To speak. To speak when you are eating. We better avoid doing those things, right? You better not. Okay, I have already explained you one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now you are going to um, explain what do you understand by stare, keys, touch, spit, scratch, burp, and be impatient. So it means that you should avoid, okay, staring, kissing, touching. What, what is that? What do you understand? What do you understand by that? Go and discuss to your classmates. ¿Qué entienden por eso? Okay. Avoid. Acuérdense del tema. Bad manners we should avoid. Okay. So it means que nada de lo que está aquí es algo bueno. Let us go and just talk to your classmates about this. I'm not going to change them.
Gracias. Porque vi eso. Esa y Kiss. Kiss, ajá. Kiss era Kiss, la otra. Touch, Kiss. Ah, Being, Touch. being Passionate. Eh, y las otras estaban unidas eran Scratch, Barb y Speed. Ok. Pero la voy, la voy a escribirlas. Teacher. Hello, Osvaldo. Eh, me sacó. Cuando me pasó a los cortitos, me sacó. No entré al, al room. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Tengo a Remberto que acaba de entrar. Vamos a Just ver. Here. Ok. De hecho, no me aparece en ningún lado, Osvaldo. Ni en, los, ni en los oyentes. Ni en los equipos que formamos. No me aparece en ningún lado, chico. ¿Cómo es eso? Qué raro. Let me see. Ok, Remberto lo voy a mandar ya a un... José Roberto, Rosa. Aquí me apareció Osvaldo. Ok. Y, um, ya lo mandé con quién estaba. Lo mandé al 2. <ríe> no sé si lo cambié. Tiene que ser relacionado al trabajo. Ajá, ¿Cómo? relacionado con el trabajo. Este, sí. Ok. Todo esto tiene que ser en oraciones relacionadas al trabajo. Okay. Correcto. Ajá. No, digamos bueno, que no oraciones, sino que, que nosotros expliquemos que entendemos, ajá, que entendemos por cada una de esas palabras. Okay. Entonces, por ejemplo, eh, ella hablaba de que cuando... Alguien, por ejemplo, una mujer es nueva en un trabajo, un mal hábito, una cosa que no se debería hacer, es, lo primero que me pregunta es, ¿estás casada? Entonces, es algo similar, ¿va? Okay, por ejemplo, okay. el otro, stir, es cuando, no, yo así lo entiendo, no sé si estoy mal, que, que uno llega y la gente empieza a mirarlo de pies a cabeza y así como que, ¿y por qué me miro? <ríe> o no sé. 
sería ese un mal hábito? Bueno, no sé. Sí, va. Sí, porque Sí, sí. quiero sonar, se, se siente incómodo. Pero fíjate que eh, puede ser un mal hábito tal vez eh, en el área donde ustedes se desenvuelven, pero yo que trabajo en el campo con gente de las zonas rurales, es normal que te miran de pies a cabeza. ¿no? <ríe> o sea, ¿qué te puedo decir de eso? No, es, bueno, es que, es que la, la traducción es mirar fijamente. Ajá, correcto. Siempre te hacen así. Te analiza con la mirada. <ríe> <risa> pues, de verdad, te lo juro. Entonces, a mí eso pongámosle. no me gusta, me incomoda. Pero, ¿cómo lo ponemos en inglés? Ajá. Pero, o sea, yo a veces veo que esa es, puede ser hasta un saludo. Pero en el cachete, en la boca. Ah, ok. Ok, Creo por, que... lo que, ajá, por lo que mencionaba eh, Oswaldo, ajá, que mencionaba lo de los call centers, me imagino que ah, por los tipos de empresa también, ¿verdad? Pueda que, por si hay relaciones de noviazgo o, no sé, ¿verdad? Matrimonios, una cosa así, quizás por eso se refiere ajá. a lo de los besos, ¿verdad? Que sí está bien tener tu relación. Uh -huh. pero eso es como afuera de la empresa, no dentro de la empresa. Sí, yo creo que a eso se refiere, porque ajá, los otros creo que son como un saludo, de cortesía, a veces de confianza, de otras amistades. Ok, luego el otro es de Tao. De, no sé, como un comentario para que cuando nos toque alguien que lo lea. Ajá, un comentario de todo eso. Okay. Ajá. De ahí bueno, nosotros pensamos que es una falta de respeto y ética profesional. Okay, guys, I would like to listen now to your participation. Now, um, could you uh, discuss about the meaning of stare, kiss, touch, spit, scratch, burp, and be impatient? Did you uh, discuss about them and could you get an agreement among them? Yes, we got only two different rooms. No nos podemos perder. 
o solo era el equipo one o el equipo two. Only two. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about stare? What is stare? Stare, stare when people uh -huh. look at you from head to toe. And uh, you feel uh, uncomfortable. 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 Okay. Uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Or sometimes when you are speaking, right? Imagine that you are in a meeting. You are having a meeting and you are the supervisor. And then it is very different when you see the uh, to the person that is in front of you, but you are interested in what he or she is saying. But when you are have your, uh, the glance, it is fixed to the person, you feel like, hey, what happens, right? Because you are the, um, you feel the sight of the person, of from the people, but in a different way. When you stare them, you, ju you don't just look at them, you stare them. And that is something not that good, right? Because you make people feel uncomfortable when you see them for a long time or when in the way that you see them, right? So we need to be careful. What about kiss? The second team. We are uh, a structure that a comment that uh -huh. that the the all this. Uh, bad manners and we think that that it's a lack of respect and unprofessional ethics to carry out any of these uh, bad manners because like because we are con consider that is practice uh, um que están fuera de lugar we are of course. We, uh -huh, uh -huh. But what about and... the kiss? What do you think about the, the kiss in your job? When we say kiss, it is not, we are not thinking about kiss like a lovely kiss with your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? We're talking about uh, co-workers. What do you think about it? Maybe... A uh, lack of education, which speaks very badly of a person. Okay. And mainly it happens, uh, I am so sorry for telling this, but it mainly happens with uh, uh, boys that sometimes when we have girls in the institutions, and mainly when you like the girls, you immediately greet, la saludan y la alan, inmediatamente ya no es un, uh, a normal kiss, a normal greeting, sino que alan a la persona y la están forzando a dar un beso en la mejilla. Pero sometimes ese beso en la mejilla se siente acosador. Right? So we should avoid doing those practices because you can see it, you can feel it. And it doesn't happen, uh, this, it is not only, as I said, not only for women, for boys, right? It happens, for, uh, boys and boys, girls and girls. So we need to be very respectful at the moment that we are going to greet that person. If you are going to use a kiss as a means of greeting, you should be really, really respectful. Respectful. Better not doing it. Right? That is the best option. Avoid it. 
What about touch? It is related. They are together. What about touch? Hay quienes no pueden hablar sin estar tocando a la persona. Stop it. It's, it's, it's similar when, when the kiss, yeah? Well, for example, when mm -hmm. there is a new partner in the company, so and touch <laughs> uh, any person who do you know and it's the first time to see them and touch so it's very complicated that so and even even if it is not the first time that you see that person but maybe everyone knows that person in the company and they say oh allá viene Maybe it is a boy, maybe it is a girl, but you have that uh, created that environment because they know you and because you don't care. You don't care. Sometimes you touch arms, you turn the wrist, right? Or maybe head, uh, maybe neck. I don't know. How come, but they cannot avoid touching people? And that is something that we need to be very careful. Cases, touching, we need to respect that, right? And then spit, scratch, and burp. Well, <laughs> what can we say about this? <laughs> Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you seen this in your job? Or no, spit, scratch, or burp. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's spit. I think that is more common. Common, 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 common. 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 Uh, and the people, uh, no se da cuenta, quizá, y a cada rato. Yeah, yes, they are spitting. <laughs> they are spitting at, at any time. And also they have another one that is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they do it at any moment. Uh, a veces, a veces pasa, y lo digo en español, uh -huh. que es más como que los hombres tienen esa, ese mal hábito de hacerlo. O sea, de, de escupir, yo no entiendo por qué. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either, right? But but there is a, that is a bad habit that they have. In this case, it is a bad habit. Also, uh, bar, barping, it is, they don't care about who, where they are. And, and it, this is not only for men, okay? I have heard ladies doing this and they are eating and all of a sudden burp, <laughs> that, and they do it when lunch time or break times right and uh, yeah, style. <laughs> yeah but what they say is yo que puedo hacer y eso que no hemos incluido one that I, I, I didn't include there but they say pero es que es algo natural del cuerpo right burping and the same thing they said about another one that is not here because they said, pero no puedo detenerlo. Y creen que todos los demás tenemos que aceptarlo. Just because it is something natural. But it goes, uh, and it is related to, to your education, of course, that you need to really respect the others, right? Le and echan la course, culpa, perdón, le echan la culpa a la soda que se tomaron. <laughs> yes, yes, it usually happened, right? Well, and finally, we have the last one that it is not related to that, but it says, be impatient. What do you think that there is something that we should avoid? Be impatient. I need to obtain information instant Instantania. Instantly. Correct. Instantly. Okay. Uh, when the people are uh, uh, 
Eh, touch? Oh, all right. Como moviendo la mano o el pie. Ah, ok. Your body language. Ok, you are. Uh -huh. Ok, you are showing through your body language that you are impatient. impatient. And maybe, maybe the process or the, the, what you want them to do, it is not something easy. But those are the ones that want uh, all the activities to be done like this. And they show it, right? So. Uh, I think that we need also to respect in the way that you are going to ask, that you are going to request the different aspects, right? That's why we are working with request, and now we are including this. But manners, we should avoid. Okay, thank you, guys. And now we are moving to the positive, a las más bonitas, not this one. These are not good ones. But we do them. And then we are going to uh, go to the good manners, the ones that we should practice at any moment. For Teacher, example, yes. La lista. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You see, I easily forget these. Vamos a ver. Okay, guys, be ready, please. Voy a comenzar de abajo hacia arriba, vamos. Wilmer Alexander Mendoza García. Porque están distraídos. <laughs> no, Wilfredo Renderos León. No, Valeria sí, Mitch. Onta, okay. onta. Ahí está, Wilfredo, ok. Valeria Michelle Monge Valencia. Present. Ok. Rosa Esther Rivera Hernández. Present. Ok. René Alexi Caballero Amaya. No está, René. Osvaldo Vladimir Garay Pineda. Present. Ok. Moisés Elías Torres Bernal. No está Mauses. Ok. Primer día que ha estado de, 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 de oyente. Maximiliano Adonai Flores Escobar. Pero ahí está Mauses. Yo lo vi, pero no me contesta. Ok. No le sirve el micrófono. Entonces, Mauses. Ok. Maximiliano. <risa> Sí, Moses, ya, ya, hoy sí ya lo vi. A Mateo de Jesús Torres Romero. Present. Ok. María René Jovel Álvarez. Lucía Verónica Nerio Márquez. Um, Present. Ok. Kerin Alexis Escobar Cruz. Present, teacher. Kenia Stephanie Fuentes Reyes. Present. Kenia Lisette Barrera Hernández. Present teacher. A Carlina Loreni Navarro Ruiz. José Roberto Revelo Calderón. José sure. Roberto Calderón Pacheco. Just here. Ok. ¿Me contestó José Roberto Revelo? Yes, I'm here. Ah, ok. José Adilson Vázquez García. Present teacher. Ok. Jessica Carolina Rodríguez Saldana. Present. Ok. Jessica Araceli Díaz Ruballos. Present. Jennifer Elizabeth Évora Santos. I'm here, teacher. Good. Gilberto Lazo Funes. Present teacher. Ok. And Eric Isaac Chávez Hernández. Present. Elsa Benedicta Magaña Umaña. Present teacher. Alma Brendalí Nieto Elías. Alfredo Rigoberto Alcántara. 
Okay, guys, <clears throat> we are going to continue. <clears throat> I was here. Okay, guys, I was telling you that we have the good manners. Of course, we have bad manners, but also we have good manners. And I think that these are the ones that we practice more than the previous ones. Okay, uh, we have here, for example, this is related to our vocabulary more than actions, but we have some actions too. For example, whenever you ask for a favor or you are requesting something, uh, well, depending of the structure that you use, you are going to, to use the word please. For example, when we use, would you mind? Then you can avoid saying please, but uh, maybe in the end you can say please, or maybe you can say thank you immediately. You have received something, right? That someone has said some has done something for you, and then you we need to say thank you. Sometimes we forget to use this word because we think the other person knows. Because we have in our mind, no es que si sabe, sabe que, que yo estoy agradecida, but we don't say it. So we better say it verbally. We expressed. And not only when we want to say thanks, but also when we, when we want to say sorry, hey, I made a mistake. Right? So, hey, sorry. Or excuse me, because I did something that was not okay. For example, maybe you got a request that uh, someone wanted you to get some photocopies, right? And you just forgot about it. And then you didn't have the final result. You didn't have the 100 copies that someone needed. And then you say, hey, Excuse me, I was really busy, but I'm gonna do it soon. And then you start working on it, but you express that to the one that has already asked you about this. Another one, great. It includes all the greetings that you know, right? And greetings sometimes depends from the person that you are with. Imagine that you are in your job and you are with your friend because we need to understand what a friend is and what a coworker is. Imagine that you consider that person your friend and when you arrive to your job, Usted no saluda ni dice nada, sino que solamente hace esto a la persona que está ahí. Y usted llega y le hace. Y ya estuvo el saludo. But if it is your friend, it is acceptable. Right? But what about when you arrive y hay más personas que no solamente está su amigo? The ones that you uh, feel really confident. No, you need to express and at least you're going to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, right? And also when you're leaving, if you are leaving the place, okay, it's okay, take care of yourself. And then you leave that place, right? So different, different ways to greet, but these are something positive. Another one, smile. For many people, this is something very difficult, but really difficult. And I can see in this class that there are some of you that are very, very serious. And then you say, yo por qué me voy a reír si no conozco a nadie de aquí? And you write, you write. 
But let me tell you something. It is a part of attitude. Attitude. Si usted quiere bloquear communication with your coworkers, if you don't want to have like a relationship, y no estoy hablando de una relationship amorosa, right? I'm talking about a relationship about your team, your coworkers. If you want to block that communication, don't smile. Don't smile and be really serious. But if you want to have a better communication with your team, if you are a supervisor, if you are a manager, even if you are among your coworkers, one smile makes the difference. Tampoco hay que malinterpretarla. Right? Because if someone smile at you, no es porque le guste. It is because that person wants to have a better communication with you. Right? So we need to understand the body uh, language. We need to understand that. Right? But um, something that it is not here, but I think that is the base of everything it is. And I'm going to write it here. And in capital letter. Respect. We need to practice this. We need to respect all co-workers. In any sense. We should avoid shouting. If you are a manager, if you are a leader, you're not going to shout. You're not going to, to scream and you're not going to tell them, ya te dije que hagas eso. Because you are co-workers. And we need to understand that we are in a different environment. So respect, I think it is the best of all these manners. And then the stand in line. Stand in line, pareciera algo como, ¿y esto qué tiene que ver? What do you understand by standing in line? What do you understand? I consider, or oh, I think that is similar with the res respect because uh -huh. uh, the line your your antepone uh -huh. the other person with with talking or with relationship with you okay for example yeah. um vamos a decir si los códigos con los que yo me relaciono o, uh -huh. o, o los códigos con los que yo entablo una conversación con alguien y con quien identifico, bye. por ejemplo, hay personas con las que uno dice, con ella sí puedo tener una amistad, con esta otra persona no, y con esta otra persona meramente laboral. Yes. Yeah, you need to understand. Because we do not behave the same with uh, all the coworkers in the same way. Because we separate. And that is true. That is true. Okay, good. Do you have any other idea about standing in line? Like something more literal? Uh, like, like when, just now, when we have a meeting online, you can put your camera. Aha. Uh -huh. To, okay. to see a uh, other person and the other person see you. Okay, yes. But, but, my dear Elsa, if when we are talking about activities like this, we say online. Okay. Okay, okay. That is online. 
But this, it says in line. Don't you have any other idea? Guys? Okay. This is a practice that we do. I'm just trying to think about different contexts. Okay, imagine that it is lunchtime. What do we do? What do we usually do in our jobs in lunchtime? We need to pinch. Some, some of you, you need to pinch. And some other, you need to go to the to the cafeteria because you need your food. Dining so room. Aha, uh -huh, but staying, okay, standing in line also can represent that you need to respect your turn. Okay. Okay? Because uh, uh, sometimes we think, mira, venite para acá, because you have your coworker allá adelante, y usted se va. Y tiene una línea de 10 coworkers, pero como tiene a su friend allá bien adelante, o maybe in the cafeteria, or maybe where you are going to pitch in, what do you think it is going to be the reaction for the others? Angry. <laughs> okay, hey, okay, todos hacen la, la misma bulla. Hey, okay. So it is because we need to respect. Right? And then we have another one. This is something I said basic. It is basic, but sometimes we do not practice it. For example, in all our jobs, siempre tenemos personal de servicio. En todos. Y creemos que porque son personas de servicio y a veces van cargados o cualquiera que sea su ocupación, llevan algo en las manos y tienen que cruzar puertas. And we don't help them. Los vemos y como que si no, los hemos visto. Y usted pasa y todavía les deja caer la puerta. So we need to be very careful with that. I mean, maybe we are not friends with all of them. But we need to help each other. And if you do that, if you hold the door, it means that you are being kind, that you are polite, you help the person. Y no porque esta persona le pueda agradecer. It is because that is the way you are. So, here we can get involved with values. Remember values? So, yeah. it is why yes. we have we have something inside. Y eso es lo que usted va a dar. Yes? Aunque la persona a la que usted le sostuvo la puerta, maybe no le va a decir, thank you, you did it, because that is what you are. I'm telling you this because um, since I, I use the public transportation, sometimes I see this situation. Um, last time, a lady was uh, with her baby, right? Se subió. Entonces todo el mundo lo que busca es, vamos a ver quién era el asiento, right? Y se lo dieron. Pero ahora sucedió something different. Lo que uno espera es que no le den el asiento, right? But someone did it. Y cuando se puso de pie y se lo dio, ¿qué cree que hizo la señora con su bebé? Solo se sentó como quien dice, si es que me lo tienen que dar, pero no dijo absolutely nothing. No dijo, thank you very much, le ayudo con la bolsa. No, 
agarró a su bebé y se sentó con todo. Yo sí. Nadie está obligado a darle el asiento. Nadie está obligado en realidad. Pero alguien tuvo la amabilidad de dárselo. So, lo mínimo que podría esperar es thank you. Pero there are a lot of people around or place of work that they are not going to say thank you. And that's why sometimes we need to accept, okay, they don't say even thanks, but I'm going to help, right? But of course, that is not the perfect context. The perfect uh, environment might say, okay, you help and the other person says thanks. That is the perfect, the ideal situation. But if we don't have them, anyways, right? We need to respect. Then, <laughs> keep your distance. Okay, I did it by myself, sorry. Okay, then we said keep your yes. distance. <laughs> Not nothing. <laughs> okay. Keep your distance. This is more related um, if if we think about the situation that we have been through, right? About the pandemic uh, situation that we got. So we need to keep your distance, our distance. And of course, we need to understand uh, that um, not everyone, everyone needs to be hugged or kissed. No, we need to respect their space and finally that is shake hands shake hands is related to greetings right when you greet hey how are you and i'm telling you this just for like extra information shaking hands de acuerdo a la información que ustedes pueden leer Dice mucho de quién es usted y cómo es. De, cómo, de su carácter, y no estoy hablando carácter fuerte, agresivo. Right? Fuerte es su personalidad. Tiene presencia. A eso me refiero. Shake hands firmly. Y toda la mano. That is the best. Toda la mano and firmly. Because sometimes, y ya se habrá dado cuenta a esta altura, hay muchas maneras como la gente da la mano. Hay quienes solo le dan así. <laughs> y hay quienes solo le hacen así. That is part of your personality. Usted está transmitiendo through your hand part of your personality. So, next time when you shake hands, you better do it strong, firmly, and the complete hand, right? No a dejarle morada la mano al otro cristiano, right? But, I mean, they need to know <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that, that you have a great personality, right? So, we have bad manners, good manners, y todo, ¿por qué? Because we need to, ya no veo esto, donde está el punto, ¿verdad? Because we want to use should or shouldn't. Should or shouldn't. Entonces, when are we going to use should or shouldn't? Porque fíjense que Elsa llega tarde a su trabajo. Entonces, entre todos nosotros, le vamos a dar un consejo a Elsa. Using the auxiliary should or shouldn't. If we want to use them, I'm going to... 
Okay. I'm going to use this structure. Y lo que le vamos a poder decir a Elsa es, hey, Elsa. Y porque llega tarde todos los días. Come on. Okay. And then I, I'm going to, I want to help you. And then I'm going to tell you. Okay, Elsa. You should. Y voy a utilizar otro verbo que no sea go. ¿Qué verbo podría utilizar yo para darle un buen consejo a Elsa? Pero vean la forma del verbo. Base form. Si Elsa llega tarde todos los días, ¿qué consejo le puedo dar a Elsa? Elsa. You should get up earlier. Earlier. ¿Por qué? Porque maybe Elsa entra a las ocho. Pero se levanta a las siete. Descansa un montón. Ajá. Quisiera. Y vive bueno, lejos. Pero como ella dice, ah, pero yo quiero descansar, ah, hay que se aguante. No, entonces yo le digo a Elsa, Elsa, you should get up earlier. That is my advice to her. That is in a positive way. Pero también puedo decirlo aquí in a negative way como, hey, Elsa. No, aquí es. You should not or you shouldn't. Voy a quitar el verbo go. You shouldn't. Get up. You shouldn't go. Hey. Uh, arrive. You shouldn't arrive. On time. No. Late. Okay, you shouldn't arrive late. Uh, okay. Okay, si no on time, él le está diciendo que no llegue a la hora, niño. Okay. Que llegue a la hora. Ah, yeah. Por eso. Me reflejé ahí, lo siento. Okay. O, you shouldn't get up late. Okay. So, I need to uh, fix, or I need to see which is the best verb if I use a positive or a negative statement, right? So I have two different ways. And in the book, we have some examples. Let's see. These are equations, but I want to see this one. This is what I have already explained. I want to go to this. We have here four different situations. In the first one, I have Peter is the new supervisor. He likes to give orders. He never says Please, mire que Peter más bonito. So, he demands, but he never says, say, no, he never says, please. Entonces viene el primer example y dice, Peter should ask polite requests. Una cosa que tiene que hacer Peter. Another one. Otra sugerencia que le vamos a dar a Peter es. Peter should say please when he asks for something. We are giving him some options. We are suggesting some aspects to Peter. Y de esa misma manera, we have Carl, the assistant, and Lucy. 
We have three more different situations at work. ¿Qué sugerencias les podemos dar a ellos tres? And that is what you are going to do in this moment with your team. Right? Al menos dos para cada uno. Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay, yes. let us go. Let us go and work with your with your team. Se mantienen los mismos. O hay sí, algún no. oyente que ya deja de ser oyente? Sí, sí, sí. Yes. Nos puede pasar la, la imagen. Ah, ok. Let me, let me oh. see. Let me see. Pero voy a borrar todo esto. Ok. Para que no se vea feo. Ok, vamos a ver. Screenshot. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, there it is. Can you see it now? In the chat box. It is in the chat box. Okay. Okay, okay. okay guys. Okay. So let us go and give your suggestions for three different cases, three different situations. Let us work.
Great. Yes. Um, when... Pero, eh, she... Y ahí lo vamos a dejar como de asistente. <laughs> sí, ¿verdad? Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok, de asistente. When she writes yeah, then... her e emails. Shu, perdón. My, my assistant should greet. Sí. No sé si yes. se pronuncia. Saludar. Greet, correcto. Okay. My ass assist assistant never use a se solutions salutes uh -huh. in her emails. Ah, que nunca saluda. Nunca saluda en los correos. Mm -hmm. Um entonces sería assistant. My. My, oh, aha, okay. my, my assistant. Assistant. Show. Show. Use. Use. The. Y la palabra. At Some... the beginning of her emails. Al inicio de sus. Correos. No, muy larga. Um, no, o sea, me refiero a, a use the. Sí, la palabra. Ajá, sal, uh, corríjenme si no se pronuncia así. Salutations in her emails. That's it. Yes? Ok. Ajá, entonces sería my assistant should use the salutations. In her emails. Y, y la otra sería my assistant um, shouldn't shouldn't ajá um, la que estaban diciendo uh -huh. ¿cuál dijeron perdón El verbo omitir se lleva en... Mi asistente no debería omitir el saludo en sus correos. Ok. O, oh, eh, my assistant shouldn't forget. De olvidar. También. No debe, no debe olvidar. ¿Cómo dijiste? Perdón.
Okay, guys. Now let's see which are the suggestions that you have for these three different uh, situations. Okay, vamos a escuchar una por cada equipo de cada una de ellas, right? For example, <clears throat> what can you suggest to Carol? Team number one. Carl, mm -hmm. should be patient. Okay, good. <laughs> Team number two. Team number two. ¿Qué le dicen a Carl? Carl uh -huh. shouldn't uh -huh. loud voice when speaking. Okay. Shouldn't. Aquí le vamos a dejar lo mismo. Okay. Shouldn't shout. Shout. Okay. Shout. Shouldn't shout. What, what is the pronunciation? The shouldn't. Shouldn't. Uh, negative. Negative. Uh, shouldn't. 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 Okay. Sh okay. Uh, sh shouldn't. 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 Okay. Most of us we say shouldn't, but um, if we want to improve it a little bit, we can say shouldn't, shouldn't. Okay, he shouldn't. Okay, so cat shouldn't shout, right? When things are not as he expects. That can be a good compliment. Now, for your assistant. Ya casi terminamos, chicos. My assistant should greet when she writes her emails. Okay, good. The second team. My assistant should use the suggestions in her emails. That's it. Good. And now, what suggestions do we have for Lucy? Lucy shouldn't to tell jokes in the office. Okay. Shouldn't. 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 Y después, ¿cómo viene el verbo? Con to tell or tell? Tell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. The second team. Sure. The second team. Or you didn't finish? Estábamos discutiendo eso, pero creo que um, compañeros. Díganme si, si alguien logró anotar. Perdón, ¿me sacó en, en cuál? En eh, Lucy. Mm, ok. Lucy shouldn't be so loud. En Lucy, no, perdón. Lucy shouldn't be so loud. En Lucy should be quiet. <risa> It should be quiet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is uh, that is kind of hard. <laughs> okay, pero uh, uh, can you repeat the first one? Lucy shouldn't be so loud. Um, shouldn't uh, shouldn't be. loud shouldn't loud. Okay, loud. Or, or shouldn't. Es que incluso este ejercicio aquí está como redundante. She louds very loudly. Y lo que yo digo, ¿cómo sería? Lucy debería, Lucy no debería ser tan ruidosa. O That's está it. Mal? Shouldn't be, shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be that loud. Ok, así sería mejor. Shouldn't be that, muy, that loud. That loud. Ok. That is much better. Ok, guys. Ok. So we have finished this. So we, the teacher, should should finish the class on time. <laughs> okay. 
Now let's continue and then test the attendance. Okay, guys, let us go for the last one. We we'll start from Alfredo Rigoberto Alcantara. Alma Brendalí Nieto, Elías. Elsa Benedicta Magaña Umaña. Present. Eric Isaac Chávez Hernández. Present. Gilberto Lazo Funes. Present, teacher. Jennifer Elizabeth Evora Santos. I'm here, teacher. Okay. <laughs> Your time now. Jessica Araceli Rías Rubayos. Present. Jessica Carolina Rodríguez Aldana. Present. José Adilson Vázquez García. Present. José Remberto Calderón Pacheco. Yes, here. José Roberto Revelo Calderón. Carlina Loreni Navarro. Kenny Elisette Barrera Hernández. Present teacher. Ok. Kenia Stephanie Fuentes Reyes. Kering Alexis Escobar. Present teacher. Lucía Verónica Nerio Márquez. María René Jovén Present, Álvarez. Present teacher. Ok. Mateo de Jesús Torres Romero. Present. Maximiliano Adonai Flores Escobar. Present teacher. Moisés Elías Torres Bernal. Osvaldo Vladimir Garay Pineda. Present. René Alexi Caballero Amaya. Rosa Esther Rivera Hernández. Present. Valeria Michelle Monje Valencia. Wilfredo Renderos León. Present. Okay. Y Wilmer Alexander Mendoza García. Okay, guys, that's all for this class. Thank you very much for participating and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take Good care. Bye see bye. you. See you. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.